The chair recognizes Councilman O, who will present a resolution recognizing State Senator Stuart Greenleaf. Would Senator Greenleaf and those accompanying him please join the councilman at the podium. And joining Councilman O, we have Councilwoman Blackwell. And Councilwoman Keona Sanchez. Thank you very much. And Councilman O'Neill. All right. Thank you very much, Council President. Um, this body passed resolutions um, about criminal justice reform and, in particular, about Eric Riddick the evidence which indicates now that he is not guilty of the crime that he's incarcerated for. And during that process, I wanted to reach out to the, uh, the chair of the Senate Judiciary Committee, and without any hesitation or problems, he agreed to meet me. And I did a little research on my way up to meet Senator Stuart Greenleaf, and I was astounded because I didn't know that he had introduced 20 bills on criminal justice reform and had been fighting that fight since 2002 and had three very significant bills which actually passed this year. The Senate and the House, and that's great leadership on his part. Uh, Representative uh, Joanna McClinton was also involved with the uh, Eric Riddick matter. And so with that, I wanted to thank him and recognize his work, his 41 years uh, of public service, including as a state rep, because of the work that he has done. And there is no county that has been more positively impacted from this work that he's done, because it's about justice, uh, than Philadelphia. And so this is a, res a resolution recognizing and honoring State Senator Stuart Greenleaf on the occasion of his retirement and thanking him for his commitment to criminal justice reform. Whereas after an illustrious 40 years representing Pennsylvania's 12th District, State, State Senator Stuart Greenleaf is retiring at the end of this year. He began his service in the State House of Representatives in 1977 and the State Senate in 1979. And, and I just want to know why you're taking early retirement. <laughs> okay. Uh, whereas no member of the Pennsylvania General Assembly has been the prime sponsor of as many bills signed into law as Senator Greenleaf. Since 1977, he has been the prime sponsor of more than 160 bills, an average of four per year, that have been signed into state law by seven governors. He has also been influential in the passage of an additional 155 pieces of legislation that became law for which he was not the prime sponsor and. Whereas a former Montgomery County Assistant District Attorney, Senator Greenleaf has chaired the Senate Ju Judiciary Committee since 1985. <coughs> His efforts have reduced recidivism and helped returning defendants to be productive citizens. And whereas Senator Greenleaf has built a sterling reputation as a pragmatic, independent thinking legislator who, will, who is willing to cross aisles to work for the common good, <coughs> in announcing his retirement, he said, a mantra has always been that there is no Republican or Democrat idea. The idea shouldn't be pigeonholed uh, as liberal or conservative. Ideas that are good for our community deserve to, deserves to be supported. And whereas among Senator Greenleaf's most notable legislative contributions are a constitutional amendment adopted in 1996, which allows child witnesses to testify via closed circuit television, and Megan's Law, which protects children from sexual predators. And whereas towards the end of his final term, Senator Greenleaf shepherded three bills he sponsored through the legislature to become law. The Safe Harbor Bill, Senate Bill 554, prevents child victims of human trafficking and sexual exploitation from being criminally prosecuted for crimes they have been forced or coerced to commit. 
Senate Bill 915 extends the time period for the filing of a post-conviction relief petition under Pennsylvania's Post-Conviction Relief Act from 60 days to one year when new evidence is discovered. Senate Bill 916 allows expanded post-conviction DNA testing to prove innocence when new technology would yield more accurate and probative results than technology available at the time of the trial. All three bills were signed into law on October 24, 2018. And whereas the citizens of Philadelphia and all Pennsylvanians have, Pennsylvanians have benefited from the tireless effort of Senator Stuart Greenleaf to improve the criminal justice system over the past four decades, from protecting children and victims to preventing unjust punishment from being executed punishment from being executed, Senior Greenleaf deserves enormous gratitude from all the citizens of the Commonwealth. And now there be it resolved that by the Council of the City of Philadelphia that we hereby recognize and honor State Senator Stuart Greenleaf on this occasion of his retirement and thanks him for his commitment to criminal justice reform. Further resolve that an engrossed copy of this resolution be presented to State Senator Stuart Greenleaf. And the chair recognizes Senator Greenleaf for remarks. Well, thank you very much. Um, it's an honor and a privilege uh, to have served uh, in the state senate. Uh, and it's an honor and privilege um, to represent you, uh, even though you're not in my district, uh, that um, we have common interests uh, in both the suburbs and, and the um, uh, and the city. When I went to, uh, um, up to uh, Harrisburg, uh, I had a history of being pretty tough on crime, um, very tough on crime, and I was a prosecutor for eight years, tried murder cases, um, uh, was the chief of appeals division, argued cases in, um, in front of the Pennsylvania and United States Supreme Court cases. Um, and I was um, pretty draconian. Uh, but uh, then I came to what I call my road, of, uh, my, um, the road to Damascus experience. Uh, and uh, that they were approached when I had a hearing on the matter, on these matters, of, uh, that we had convicted innocent people. And I said, there's no way that happened in Montgomery County or in Pennsylvania. And they, and they were persistent about it, and they said there were, if you give us an opportunity to have better DNA testing, we'll prove it to you. So I was not afraid of that, so okay, let's do it. So I passed the legislation on better access to DNA evidence, and lo and behold, we did convict innocent people. We have convicted innocent people in Pennsylvania. That shook me, because I was there for justice, not for convictions. And uh, so I started to look into it, and that was in 2000 and 2002, had a bill that introduced that would help in, uh, the DNA testing uh, process. What we were doing was a failed system. We, had, we, we thought that being tough on crime was going to solve all our problems, and just the opposite happened. The tougher we got, the higher the recidivism rate went up. Actually, it went up as high as 64% recidivism rate. That's two out of three inmates that left our state prisons returned there within three years. That's a failed, failed system. And it was a system that I helped uh, create. I was the author of the mandatory minimum sentences and to numerous other um, uh, opportunities that we thought would make our streets safer and be successful. It's, but it's all counterintuitive. That's not the situation. That's not what... That's not what happened. We were spending millions of dollars in building new prisons. We had to build a new state prison, a new state prison, every year to stay up from that, up, uh, to stay up with the number of inmates that we had coming in. It was we were just throwing money, and I, you know, I wouldn't mind doing that if it was successful. But a 64 recidivism rate is not successful, and we were spending a lot of money. The, the Department of Corrections was the fastest growing department in the state of Pennsylvania. Failed, failed system though. So we decided to make some minor changes in, and, uh, in the uh, 
in the law. We finally got that through because there was a, still holding on to this idea that the tougher you get, the, the safer we are, and that's just the opposite. And so we um, introduced some bills in regard to incentives when people would be get early parole and early release and things like that, minor compared to what we needed to be doing. And you know what the result was? Our recidivism rate went down to 40 percent, and and the rate and the, our and our violent crimes didn't go, go uh, up either. So it was safer. And we saved millions, I'm telling you, millions of dollars um, in uh, saved uh, prison costs. A reduction in our, in our, our inmates went down. Did, did the violence increase? No. It was going down. It kept going down. Everything we did that we were told was going to cause havoc in our streets and created all kinds of uh, uh, opportunities for criminal activity was just the opposite. And most of these offenders were non-violent offenders. They weren't violent offenders. They were non-violent offenders. And we were making them violent offenders and turning them into tougher prisoners. Um, so next session, we'll have a little, we left a whole slew of about 20 bills and other bills there that are ready to go. If you can imagine if we passed even a fraction of those bills, what would happen to our costs and our recidivism rate. It's counterintuitive. But it's correct. This is the way to go. We needed to go. I was going in the wrong direction. I had my road to Damascus experience. And we're going to continue on. Uh, I left a, um, a, whole, a whole agenda of what my colleagues are going to do next session. You'll see more, I believe, prison, re prison reform and criminal justice reform legislation passed next year than it's ever passed in the history of Pennsylvania. Thank you, God. Because he all gives us all second chances, right? And, um, and in this situation, uh, we're going to see major changes uh, next session. And I urge you to support your state legislators and have the courage to stand up and say that this is not right. This is not successful. This is not. This is not going to let our people be commit a lot of crimes. It's going to do just the opposite. Um, I know it's counterintuitive, but it will work. Thank you, and thank you, and God bless you. Thank you, Council Beatties.